Hey guys, welcome into today's video. Victoria Beckham just launched a new mascara. It's called the Vast Lash Mascara. So I pulled out the rest of my Victoria Beckham makeup items. I thought it would be fun to test this mascara and use some of the other items that I have from her. Plus I picked up a couple more items that I didn't have. So that's what's on today's agenda. If you're interested in Victoria Beckham try on or this new mascara, stay tuned. So I placed my little order. All of her stuff usually comes in these bags. I have another bag just like this. It's a little bit larger because I think I had placed it for larger items and I actually took it traveling with me. It's a softer bag than this, but they're all like linen with these pull strings, which I think is really cute. Victoria Beckham, just overall, her packaging and aesthetic is a real experience. I feel like you actually get what you pay for. Everything is very hefty. Most of her products come in glass, even like the bullets, not just the potted products, but some of the bullet items like the blush and the lipstick also come in either just a really sturdy kind of like ceramic or glass material. I did do my base, obviously. I wish Victoria Beckham had a base product and maybe she'll come out with that in the future. So I just used my Gucci 24 hour breathable foundation. I have been loving this. And then I started to throw on eyeshadow. So I threw on the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette and I just played with a couple of shades. So I used this one in the crease and then this one in the outer corner. But I want to try on some of Victoria's. These are called her Lid Lusters. I have had one in my collection and I have to tell you this is one of my favorite of all time. So I picked up another shade. So let's go over these first and we'll do, we'll finish the eye look and then we'll do the mascara right away. And then we'll play with some of the other things that I picked up. So this one is in the shade Blonde. It is such a beautiful shade. It's such a soft, silky formula. Like, I love this. One of my more unique single shadows in my collection. So because I love that one so much, I wanted to pick up another. And this one is kind of more taupe. And I think this eye look will good, look good with it. It's not as light reflecting as the one in blonde, but it's still really beautiful. I think it's big enough. I'm just gonna pick it up with my finger. These are definitely on the harder pressed side. They're not an overly creamy shadow, but they're not difficult to get out of the pot with your finger or a brush. I wanna say this one is more chunky than the blonde one. It has more texture to it, but it's still like this beautiful taupey shade. Again, not as light reflecting as the blonde. So I don't love this one more than the one that I already had in my collection, but it's still really beautiful and it stays well. Like it applies easily. It has some tack to it. So I feel like it really sticks to the lid. It's a little bit on the textured side. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's not like completely smooth. All right, while this is a beautiful shade, it does not beat out blonde. <laughs> blonde is my absolute favorite. Some of the shades online I probably wouldn't use in her collection, but both of these shades are like everyday wearable shades for me. I wanted to love this more than blonde, but I don't. Of course, these are very pricey, but I still think that for the packaging and the experience, it's worth checking out if you guys are into single shadows and you haven't tried those before. All right, let's move on into this mascara. So it's called the Vast Lash. It's supposed to be smudge-free volumizing mascara. And in this box, you guys, it is so weighted. When I pulled it out of the bag, I was like, that's not the mascara, but it most definitely is. So I'm assuming this is gonna be, wow. This is the most weighty mascara I have ever held. This easily has to be like a ceramic package. And it's very different than the rest of her stuff. All of her stuff has this kind of, I wouldn't know how to describe this, but this is kind of how everything in her line looks. Even the lipsticks and the blush are all this brown on black. I'm surprised this doesn't look the same, to be quite honest. I am so into a volumizing mascara lately. So I'm hoping I love this. Even though this is not the kind of wand that I typically like, it is curved and it is the natural style bristled wands. Sometimes with volumizing mascaras, that's the better way to go, just kind of a natural bristled wand. It sounds like a wet formula, but not a whole lot appears to be picking up on the brush. So I'm kind of trying to move it around in there. It doesn't appear to be very messy either, just kind of very clean. All right, let's go into the right eye first. I'm gonna start at the base and kind of like jiggle it through. Well, now it feels like a wet formula. Okay, I built it up. 
My initial thoughts are it is definitely a wet formula and I made a mess in a couple of spots because I don't usually like wands like this, but I'm down to try a new launch from Victoria Beckham, that's for sure. It is volumizing. It's not as clean as I was kind of hoping for. It does have a little bit of clumpiness and I can feel it tugging right now already. I feel like it's drying pretty quickly, so it may not be like an overly buildable formula. You may not want to wait too long if you're going to go back in with a second coat. It definitely has some chunk to it, but I think that it gives good volume and good length. I feel like this is going to be a mascara that I'm definitely going to be interested to see how it performed once it starts to dry out. Right now, I actually don't mind these bristles. This is usually something I, I try and stay away from, especially lately. But sometimes I'm surprised at how well the natural bristles a little bit longer perform. As long as they're not too long and there's good separation between the bristles, I find that it works pretty good without making too much of a mess. So these have good separation. I don't love the curve in a wand though. I don't always find that that makes a big difference for me. In fact, I think that sometimes I struggle with a curved wand because I take my hand from going, you know, to my left eye because I'm right-handed and I'll turn it. And so sometimes that's, that's not my favorite. I did make a little bit of a mess. It is a wetter formula, even though it didn't feel like a lot was picking up on the wand, it was definitely picking up. And I can feel that it's like transferring right here, like the top part of my lid. I am making a little bit of a mess with it. So now I want to talk a little bit about the mascara now that I've kind of tried the formula and see how it compares to what is supposed to happen. This does retail for $32, which isn't actually bad for Victoria. It says it's enduring and smudge proof, yet easy to remove, vast lashes, clean volumizing, mascara reimagined, Miami proof mascara it calls itself. No flakes, no fuss, no smudge. Just serious staying power that looks just as bold and voluminous 12 plus hours later, okay? The clean eye defining mascara volumizes your lashes in a single swipe, coating evenly from root to tip. When you're ready to remove it, simply rinse with warm water. Traumatic and directional. It's bigger, bolder, better, Beckham, fast lash. It's not polite. It is major. It is thick. It is powerful. A mascara to push your look. I mean, it's not bad. Like it's pigmented enough and it definitely gives kind of drama to the lashes. Part of that was because it was really getting to my actual like waterline, like especially this one. It was like smudging up top. I feel like I made a pretty big mess on my lid on both sides. I'm telling you guys, wands like this, I really struggle with getting a clean application and getting really close to the lash line without smudging. I would say it is volumizing though, because it is kind of a little bit chunky, but I like that it adds like thickness to my lashes. So far, it is pretty good. I usually want to fall in love with a mascara, so I feel like I'm sometimes a bit of a critic the first time I try it. And of course, I will update you guys in the comments as to how it wore and whether or not it was actually smudge proof. If I sweat for any period of time and then my lashes touch right here under my eyes, I will immediately get smudging if the mascara isn't smudge proof. So I will update you guys in the comments on how it wore today because it is pretty early in the day. So I will be wearing it all morning and afternoon. Now I want to go into something else that I picked up from her. This is the contour stylus. This one is in the shade Travertine. Surprisingly, this feels really light. Oh, okay. So this one is the same packaging as the mascara. Interesting. I'm surprised there's just not continuity throughout the line. So this is a sculpt and detail. So it's really fine tipped. It almost looks like a cream shadow. It appears to be like quite a bit of product. So that's not bad. This is not like heavy or hefty at all. Very surprisingly kind of inconsistent from the rest of the stuff. So I do want to use this all over. I'm even gonna sculpt my nose, which I have never done before, but I wanna try it with this. I think I'm gonna start with that. I'm gonna use this little brush and just pull it down. This one's from e.l.f. It's a sculpting face brush, so it makes sense. Wow, does that actually look good? I feel like for me not having ever done it before, I just feel like that doesn't look half bad. And it's a halfway decent shade. Do I look sculpted? All right, let's blend this in. I don't wanna disturb the foundation, but this feels really creamy. So I don't think it will. Hmm. 
you can easily blend this in. It's a super duper creamy formula. I like that this is super precise and small, but I almost feel like it's best for small areas, like contouring the nose and such. Because I feel like I've used so much of the product already, sculpting the way that I did. It's such a good shade though, in travertine for fair skin. But yeah, I just feel like I've used such a good chunk of it. I'm trying to use it all over the face. It's such a beautiful formula. Quite honestly, very easy to blend in. Basically a powder finish and perfectly shaded. Perfectly. Should I sculpt the jaw? I don't know. We might as well just keep going. This is such a good formula for sculpting. I really do like this idea of a stylus. I feel like it's much more natural. Like that's how you would want to sculpt. You would really want to take a really, really fine detailer to do something like this anyway, and especially the nose. And there's not a whole ton that are this small. I feel like there was something to this. So I do like this. This is this is really nice and super easy to blend in. So I could see it being a fairly convenient product too. Not something that would take you a whole heck of a long time to kind of apply and then blend in. I like that. I do want to go ahead and set it. I do have one of her bricks. This is her matte bronzing brick in 01. The contour is in Sunkissed and the bronzer is in dark. It is a super luxe packaging, very, very heavy. This is a refillable compact. The problem with this has been for me that it's a little bit on the light side. It doesn't uh, show up super well on my skin. Here it is right here, especially this shade. That one's the bronzy one. So I'm gonna swirl both of these together is that's what I typically do. And let's just set this down. No, it's nicely pigmented. It's just a lighter shade of a bronzer than I would normally kind of go for. I don't know that it's showing up all that well on the forehead over the stylus. This is just on the lighter side. I feel like it looks really good on the cheeks, but I would almost be interested in trying the shade up. I always say that. And then when I get the second to lightest shade in a bronzer, I always regret it. Even though I was kind of tugging with that stylus, I don't feel like it moved the foundation at all. Even on my chin here, because I kind of drug this foundation down because I feel like it's a, a little, a sh one shade too deep for me. I actually really like this. It's something more subtle, more sophisticated, on the lighter side. I feel like this is actually quite beautiful. This has a 12 month shelf life. It looks like the stylus has a 24 month shelf life. Mascara, of course, is six months. These lid lusters also are 24 months and everything appears to be made in Italy with the exception of the mascara. This was made in the USA of imported ingredients. It is interesting. Everything that I read from you from the website about the mascara is actually included in the packaging. So it's folded up like this and everything you need to know, including the directions for removal are on this little sheet. I've never had a mascara that has had that, so that's kind of interesting. I do wanna throw on her blush and her lip product. It's the Posh lipstick. And then this is the Cheeky Posh, the blush. I have mine in kind of an orange shade, but I think it will work just fine. I haven't grabbed for this in a while. This is in the shade Knickers. It's a pretty emollient formula, but it dries down to a pretty matte finish right here. It's not the most emollient, definitely has a little bit of a stick to it. I have drawn this directly onto my cheeks, but the way that I've been applying a lot of these lately is just from the component itself and kind of tapping it onto the cheek. So that's what I'm gonna do with this. Really decent pigment on this, pretty matte finish. I feel like I appreciate this formula a lot more than I did when I first got it. Again, I feel like there's quite a bit of product. Like she definitely puts as much in as she can. All right, let's go into this posh lipstick. This one is in the shade Sway. It's kind of a, a mauve shade. There it is right there. So I don't know if it'll match exactly like the blush, which is an orange shade, but this is almost kind of my lips, but better. Oh, this is so beautiful. This is like way more intensely pigmented than I remember this being and nice shine to it too. Honestly, there are a lot of luxury products that have such a strong fragrance when it comes to lip products that I feel like this is a completely underrated formula as far as luxury lip products go because there is just a very, very slight fragrance to this. It is so slight, it's not overwhelming. For comparison, the one from Gucci, this is one of their balms. 
it's like so floral it gets in your mouth pretty similar design overall pretty similar formula it's just that it's so so fragranced whereas this one actually isn't it's this is so beautiful on my lips right now i just i can't get over the fact that i'm don't reach for that more often i was really excited to play with more stuff today that i haven't played with in a while plus revisit some things that i haven't touched in a minute i feel like from her line the only things that i haven't tried at this point are her eyeliners i think she does have some lip liners i want to even say she has a brow product i would definitely be interested in testing more but i'd love to hear from you guys what you have tried from the line what are some of your favorites if you were going to pick up the mascara or have already i'd love to hear that too i thought it was just kind of fun to sit down and play with the mascara and some of the other items from victoria beckham overall i really highly recommend her brand packaging experience formula haven't found anything yet that I dislike from the line. I feel like everything is very thorough and detailed. Nothing is being phoned in so far. That's my experience. I will be linking everything in the description box, including all the shades that I was putting on today, including everything else that I used for my full face today. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. I'm out of here and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Bye guys.